I got my first contracted job when I got out the military. I was around 22 years old. So I was making $5,000 a month tax free. Okay. Humble. Flex. I know she noticed me. Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your boy B News. I'm back with another video. I hope y'all enjoyed last week's video. This one's gonna be a little bit different and a lot of people have this question. So I'm gonna to try to break it down the best I can. How do you get a job in Korea? So a lot of people wanna to come to Korea, but they really don't know how to go and apply for a job. So I'm gonna break it down how you can do that. I'm gonna show you the website you use. I'm going to give you a couple of tips. And if you have any further questions, you can email me or leave a comment. And I hope you are further than that. I'm not going to hold your hand and tell you exactly what you need to do to land that job. And I'm going to give you some tips. And if you're really serious about it, you can hit me up and I'll give you more information and more details. I got me a little list. I'm going to break it up. I want to do um, job website, housing, management positions, workers, easiest jobs, problems with your resumes, and the SOFA status. All right, the first thing you wanna do, you wanna go to www.usajobs.gov, not .com. Okay, if you don't have, you can make you, um, you know, sign up, username, password, make a strong password. What I wanna show you on here, you have your keywords and you have location. So what I would do for you, if you're looking for jobs in South Korea, remember these jobs are on base. So these are government jobs on base. I forgot to mention that. So you would come here and you would type in South Korea. And then these are all the jobs that are available in South Korea right now. So if we look, let's go to the bottom. There's only two pages, but there's a lot of jobs on there. Usually it's about, you know, maybe five to 10 pages, but here we go. So let's look at one and I'll go into more detail what they're looking for and how you can fill this out. Um, let's look at equipment specialists. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's look at this one. So you see over to your right, it says accepting, accepting application salary, 74,000 and 96,000. Pay scale and grade is GS12. GS12 is very, very high. If I, if I remember correctly, it starts at, um, it's every two, two numbers. So ah, if I'm not tripping, it's, okay, so GS12 is high, then you have GS10, you have GS8, you have GS6. So we are come over here, they got one vacancy. This job's in Pyeongtaek. Pyeongtaek right now is Camp Humphreys. This is the biggest base in Korea. So this, this would be a good spot to be. So what you have here, you have the duties. You can read all this right here, the duties, requirement, qualifications, just like any other job. Education, um, add more, direct deposit, all that good stuff. So how you will be evaluated, you can read all this stuff, but what I wanna show you is the required documents. So it says, who's this job open up to? Federal employees. So if you were in the military, you have a veteran's preference, which would give you five points. So that means you're higher than everybody else if you weren't in the military. Another thing that's been happening, people have been arguing about is military spouses. They have a higher preference than someone that was in the military, which is very weird. The vet, even the veterans, it's, it's weird, but that's another topic. Got your duties and we got our requirements. So let's say I want to apply for this job. So I'm going to come over here, apply. So I already have all my resume stuff. So you want to come here first and you want to put your resume in. I got three different resumes. It depends on what I'm applying for, but I try to keep it up to date. So you got your resumes and then required documents that tell you what you need, your resume supporting documents, all that good stuff. Um, 
Oh, I can't click on. Okay, so let me just add my resume so I can go to the next page. I want to, I really want to show you this. So save and continue. This is going to ask you for your other documents. So for me, I have a bunch of stuff going on here, right? You can see. So I got my DD 214. That's from when I was in the military. I got my passport, passport copy, official form 306, forklift, SF 50. You know about that if you know if you're working on base, DOD appraisal. So I have all this stuff and it'll tell you what you need and you just click on the ones that you need. So I'm just going to click on that, save and continue. So this is what my review package says. I got my resume and my documents. So you're going to click acknowledge, save and continue. No, I'm not mistaken. It's going to take you to a whole nother site. Okay. I prefer not to answer. Okay. Yep. Okay, so here we go. So now you're gonna to go to a whole nother site. And this site right here, you're gonna be answering questions. All right, you're gonna put all your information in here, continue. All right, do you claim veterans preference for me? Yes, five points, I was in the military before. So for some of you, it might be no. Okay, you're gonna go through all these questions. You're just gonna answer all these questions and that's just the general of the website that I want to show you. So now I wanna get into the next topic. Oh yeah, once you do this, then you fill out your package. It'll tell you everything that you had. If you checked everything, you're good to go. If not, you get an error and it'll tell you that you need to add something else. It is also say right here, application incomplete. So that means you need to fill it out and you have to have everything before the deadline because if you have something that's incomplete and you don't do it by the deadline, your resume is not gonna get in. All right, so that's the website. The next thing is very, very, very important. A lot of people do not know this. A lot of people won't tell you, but I'm here to tell you right now. It doesn't matter if you have the best resume in the world, you went to a professional and you like, I got the best, I'm gonna get this job. You applied for it. Two, three months later, you didn't even get a notification or a referral, no emails or nothing. You're wondering why, 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 why didn't they pick me up? My resume was A plus top tier. It's not how it works for USA Jobs. It's not how it works. So I'm gonna give you a little insight. They didn't tell you, I told you this. When you do your resume, <clears throat> it goes through a computer before it goes to human eyes. So what does that mean? The computer has to pick you up before you go to the next step. How do you do that? You have to have keywords in your resume that the computer can pick up. How many? I don't know. But I've told people this before. I had people told me this when I was applying for jobs and it works. It at least gets you a referral. So how could you go about that? Um, I'm not gonna tell you if you're really interested, I'll tell you another way. If someone, you know, messaged me, there's another really, really good way, but I'm not gonna put that on here. Um, the easiest thing you can do is you wanna go back and you wanna look at the, the requirements. You wanna copy and paste some of the words in there, put that in your resume, you know, remix it up and make it your own words. But you definitely wanna copy and paste some words from out of the job description and you wanna put that in your resume and that will help you get to the next selection. The next selection would be you'll get referred. You get an email that says, congratulations, you have been referred. Then you gotta wait for the next step, which should be an interview. Another thing that's very, very important about moving to Korea, you got two ways. If you're hired for a really, really high job, like a GS-10, a GS-12, you're gonna get LQA, Living Quarters Allowance. This is really, really, really good. So what this means is they're gonna pay for your ticket, they're gonna pay for your housing when you get to Korea. So it's not coming out of your pocket, that's uh, electricity, water bill, everything. So you can go find you the flyest house in Korea and the government's gonna pay for whatever it costs. They're gonna give you a lump sum of money, can't keep that money. People already got caught up in that. You can't keep that money. So you're gonna take that money, go to your housing, and you're gonna find you a house. 
So that's the first thing you would do if you got accepted for a job that's on the higher pay grade. If you come here as like a GS5 or a WG5 wage grade, you have to come out your own pocket. So some people, they get hired from the States and you got to you gotta come out your own pocket if you're not a higher grade, which if you were coming to Korea and you were starting life, I would say just take what you need and you can buy everything else in Korea. So you have to come here, find you a house. Um, the house that I'm living in right now, I got a really, really good deal. This is three bedroom, two bathroom. It's fully furnished. It has two walk-in closet. It's, it's very, very, very nice. And I'm paying 1.4 million won a month. So if you uh, convert that over to dollars, I'm paying about $1,100 a month for this. And it's, it's very, very nice. You can also find something cheaper than that, but it ain't gonna be that nice. But if you just get in here, the houses kind of went up. So you probably could find you something around eight to 900, which would be very, very nice if you just get in here and you're not getting the LQA. Another thing that people don't know about or some people know about their skill when they come to Korea, you might get here and you might really, really love being in Korea. So if you are not a manager in a manager position, you can stay in your job, depending if it's a NAF job, which you can look that up and find out what that's about. Or if it's a government job, which is a GS job or a contractor job. So you have all, there's all different types of job. Contractors, those are very, very good jobs. These are on base two. Contractors, the reason I love being a contractor before because it's tax free. So I was, like I said, if you've been following my YouTube, I'm 40, I'll be 41 in June. I got my first contracted job when I got out the military, I was around 22 years old. So I was making $5,000 a month tax free at 22 years old. So like I was making, it's pretty good. It's tax free. So if you move over to the federal jobs, you know, your GS and your wage grades, those are taxed. What's the difference? Contract the job, more money, not job security. What does that mean? No job security. Um, every year they got to renew their contract. So you don't know, you might get it. A new company might take over and the pay might be lower or they might just get rid of you and hire new people. That's the problem. When you have a GS job or a wage grade job, job security, wherever it is a military base, you can go there and you can have a job. So that's why I prefer to move to the GS side, job security. Never have to worry about losing your job. The other thing is if you're a manager, if you're not, you know, you're not good in with your company after five years, they have the five year rule. You have to go, you have to go back to the States for two years, apply for a job again, that you can come back to Korea for another five years and get LQA. A lot of people don't want to do that. So if you're not a manager, you can stay as long as you want long as you're good with you know your manage your management i've been here going on now 20 years but i haven't been at the same job for 20 years i've moved around and did different jobs oh another thing i wanted to bring up um so i've done the best of both worlds i've worked on base and i've worked off base the difference between that is if you're working for a korean company you're only going to get paid once a month so you got to be able to manage your money once a month and Things off base are a little bit more expensive. So you appreciate being able to use all the things on base, like the gym, going to the commissary, going to the PX, uh, the movies are free, all the nice restaurants that they have in the state side. You, re you really appreciate it. And you know, shopping at the commissary is a little bit cheaper. Plus if you're working on base, you're getting paid twice a month, just like you would be in the States. I forgot to mention that. I don't know why I should say this. I don't know, but I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a little, a little tip, a little tip. If you just wanna get to Korea and you wanna get your foot in the door, there are two easy jobs that you can get. The first one, I would say, I would try to apply for an atheist job, which is like the PX on base or, you know, do car sales. 
that's one easy job that you can do. The other one is to try to get at the commissary as a cashier. You might not like it. You're at the bottom, right? But you got to work your way up. If you just want to get here, I would try to apply for those two jobs, get in the system and then move your way around, you know, meet and greet, communicate and get around. The last thing I want to talk about is SOPA status. So there's so many different types of visas that you can get in Korea. So many types, but when you're working on base, you have what is called an A3 visa. It's like a SOFA treaty that the United States, they have with the Korean government. So with this visa, when you come through the airport, they don't bother you. They don't ask you no questions, no questions. You just come through, you show them your ID, they look you up, they go through your passport, they see, oh, he's A3. You good to go if you got another visa they might question you how long you staying here for are you on a tourist visa are you on this you get all these questions so having an a3 visa in korea is clutch so i hope i didn't talk too long that's uh some things that i want to tell you about working in korea if you're thinking about it it is it's possible it's I want to say kind of easy depending on what kind of job you're looking for but if you're tired of living in the states wherever you are you can definitely get on usajobs.gov and apply for jobs in korea and come out here and if you don't like it you can leave if you like it you end up being here forever ever ever like me <laughs> i hope you enjoyed the video if you're really interested in getting a job over here leave a comment you can email me and I will get back to you and I will go more in detail on some other tips that I got. I got some more, I got some more tips, but I'm not gonna put it all in this video for free. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see y'all next week. I'm out.